booked and walked before cameras. We want to get you right to some late breaking news right now. Two people have been arrested in connection with the shooting. Now that shooting was one week ago on Winsford Drive near Waltzham Road. Patty Santos is staying on top of this story. Patty, tell us what have you learned so far? Yeah, Bear County Sheriff detectives tell us they think that the initial fight that led to this fatal shooting was over money. Tonight, we know that Adis Hernandez Rivas, just 24 years old, is heading to jail facing a murder charge. Now, detectives believe he was a trigger man in a homicide that happened last week on Winsford. That's on the northeast side near Walsham Road. Also arrested in the murder, 34-year-old Marco Moreno Vasquez. Now, detectives were able to use surveillance video to get a license plate and catch up with both suspects in Poteet in Atascosa County tonight. Detectives say the suspects and the victim were acquaintances and the victim has been identified as 32 year old Duniel Valladares Fernandez. Steve, Stephania. Thank you, Patty. More breaking news tonight. Right now, the search is on for a person involved in a shooting that happened a short time ago. So this happened in front of a service loan place on Fredericksburg Road. Police are telling us that two men inside of a vehicle pulled up and began arguing with a man who was sitting outside the building. And then things escalated when someone opened fire. That man who was hit was shot twice. He's now in the hospital where he's listed in critical condition. In other news now, their loved one was killed last year, and the person who did, who police said did it, is now out of jail. The family of that victim, Raymond Soto, spoke to the night team's John Paul Barajas. They say the little peace of mind they had is now gone. I mean, you're getting arrested, man. That's why we're giving you your chance right now. You don't want to say anything? Handcuffed and walked in front of cameras before being taken to jail. 38-year-old Jose Gerardo Gonzalez didn't say much back in November. He was accused of killing Raymond Soto. Now the Bear County District Attorney's Office has dismissed Gonzalez's murder case, and Gonzalez is out of jail. How could they do this? How could they release him um, when, they said they had when they said they had solid evidence on him or solid proof? Soto's brother, Jose, says the family wants answers. The Bear County clerk's dismissal letter states it's being investigated further. But the day police arrested Gonzalez, SAPD detectives said they found evidence that connected him to the crime scene on the 1600 block of North Flores. To include the alleged murder weapon um, on the evidence, uh, they found um, fingerprints that linked back to the suspect who was arrested. Surveillance video from the day of the murder in October shows a man walk in and out of frame. Moments later, Soto would be shot and killed. Uh, every day I just, you know, I think about it. It's, it's not something I can just turn off, but um, it just makes me wonder how he had to deal with his last moments here on Earth. He explains his family's only sense of closure is gone. Now the family's asking if their loved one's killer was let go or if the right person was ever arrested. They have this message for the DA. My whole family right now is, uh, you know, frustrated distraught, hurting, it just opens up the wound again. All we want is justice. We don't know what is going on with them. My brother's not here. He's, he's deceased. Now, this is the one page dismissal letter, and it only has a check mark under the line of further investigation. We asked the DA's office for further comment. They told us they can't speak about a pending investigation or a pending case. It's the same exact answer they gave our Erica Hernandez last week when two capital murder suspects had their charges dropped. At the Paul Elizondo Tower, John Paul Barajas, KSAT 12 News. Yeah, more than just that family with questions tonight. Thank you, John Paul. We've got a warning before this next story. Some of you may find it hard to watch. It was caught on camera. An Edgewood ISD police officer putting his knee on the neck of a teenager. It turns out that officer will not be punished by the district. Officials say an investigation determined that Officer Jonathan Garza did not violate any Edgewood policies during the violent encounter in November. Personnel records obtained by KSAT investigates those show Garza was dismissed from the Bear County Sheriff's Office in 2021 after throwing a female inmate at the jail to the floor while he was working there. Garza was later able to get the termination changed to a voluntary separation. He also got the dishonorable discharge given to him by BCSO shifted to a general discharge. The district, attorney's, the district attorney's office rejected two criminal charges against Garza, claiming there was insufficient evidence. 
As for the school district, Edgewood officials say they followed all hiring protocols in bringing Garza on board. So by now you've heard all about how bad the fentanyl problem is across the country and locally it's for forcing a police department to change the way it does its job. We're talking about the Pearsall Police Department, the city of Pearsall, about 55 miles west of San Antonio. It's a s southwest, I should say. It's a small place with just 7,000 people, but the synthetic opioid has become a big problem there. Last year, a number of people overdosed over the 4th of July weekend and since then, Pearsall's police chief has forced his department to change things. So now officers travel everywhere with Narcan, and his department is also getting respirators in case they have to stop someone from overdosing. At the end of the day, uh, our job is to preserve life, and we want to do our best to do anything we can to do it. And unfortunately, we can't do everything, but hopefully, Speaking with you today, maybe the message will get out. And Yeah, Chief Daniel Flores says his goal is simple. He just wants to help save lives. This story that you just saw is part of our new series, Fighting Fentanyl. KSAT is making a commitment to you and getting you all the information that you need to know about this powerful, deadly drug so that you can protect your loved ones. It happened this morning and cleanup still underway after a big crash in the hill country. Parts of the highway shut down for hours as crews cleaned up the wreckage. So here's video. We're going to show it to you from Sky 12 earlier this afternoon. It was over the scene on I-10 westbound near Kerr and Gillespie counties. Look at that mess. It's in the Fredericksburg area. Authorities there say a tractor trailer driver crashed into another tractor trailer that was pulled over on the side of the road. Yeah, after the impact, crews say nearly 4,000 gallons of fuel spilled onto the roadway itself. Hazmat called in to clean up that part of what happened. The good news is no one was seriously hurt in this crash. Almost 300,000 people no longer with us because they lost their lives in the Ukrainian-Russian war. That invasion started one year ago tonight, and since then, the U.S. has spent billions of dollars in support for Ukraine. Tonight, Ukrainians from our community stood outside City Hall to say thank you for that support, and they weren't alone. But Night Team's Patty Santos tells us they're asking for prayers for an end to this war. <laughs> Draped in the Ukrainian flag, migrants from Ukraine prayed for those back home who have been living in war for 365 days. So for you guys, it's maybe just a news. For us, it's day-to-day -day life. It's every minute. It's, it's a lot. It's 365 days. We divide it by seconds of horror. Innocent children, some who escaped the war zone, grieved and celebrated the strength of those still fighting back home. I'm just really glad that we're here together to support the Ukraine population, not just here in San Antonio, but all over the world. The war provoked by the invasion of Ukraine has claimed more than 7,000 civilian lives. More than 400 were children. Ukrainians in San Antonio and others from Lithuania and Georgia united in solidarity remember the 365 days their countrymen have lived in a war zone. I actually firsthand experienced the first aggression of Russian and Russian occupation in 2008. So that was close to my heart to be next to my brother Ukrainians in this fight. In the backdrop, a city hall reflecting the colors of the Ukrainian flag. Mayor Ron Nirenberg and Councilwoman Adriana Rocha Garcia stood with the crowd during a candlelight vigil, saying it's a reminder that freedom is fragile and must be protected. But tonight there's also hope that victory for Ukraine is near. But they're saying that it's almost over. We feel it. We know this. It's changing. Nobody actually has any question anymore that this uh, this fight actually will be successful. Patty Santos, KSAT 12 News. Now looking ahead, the Bear County Commissioner's Court is hosting an active shooter training for its employees tomorrow. And yes, my friends, it affects you because all offices in the downtown complex are going to be closed. So that's starting at noon. And since the closures are for an active shooter training, also you're probably going to see and hear more emergency vehicles in the downtown area. By the way, county offices are going to reopen for business on Monday, February 27th. 
Now for a look at some of today's big headlines in your Nightbeat News Flash. First, look at your vehicle, lock it, and if you have anything in there, just take it out because last night there was a string of vehicle burglaries. Happened at an apartment complex off of Wiseman near Loop 1604 on the far west side. That's where police say several vehicles were broken into. Now for the most part, burglars really didn't take all that much, but one woman thinks that had the thieves managed to actually get in her car, they would have taken it. And right now, police are looking for those burglars. Meantime, San Antonio police and Crime Stoppers are also looking for a man who robbed a Lowe's store. This happened on January 28th at the Lowe's on I-35. The man is accused of robbing the store with a gun, then running off. He was seen on security camera wearing a gray hat and long sleeved white shirt with a white polo and jeans. So if you have any information, if you recognize that man, call Crime Stoppers. The number's on your screen. 210-224-STOP. And that's a look at your Nightbeat News Flash. It's still ahead on the... For the record, no comment. Yeah, they had, they had no comment. Why were employees of this Chinese takeout restaurant hiding from Tim Gerber? And what was in their health inspection report that stopped one customer in his tracks? Find out when we go behind the kitchen door. A Chinese takeout restaurant temporarily shut down for not having hot water, but that wasn't the only violation cited by health inspectors last month. When the night team's Tim Gerber stopped by this week to ask some questions, the employees at this restaurant hid behind their kitchen door. Walk, located in the 7100 block of Tesla Road, earned an 85 on their January inspection. The inspector found live crawling insects and dead insects throughout the business. Food in the reach-in cooler was stacked on top of other foods without any protective barriers. Their food permit was expired, there was no food manager on site, and food handler certifications were expired. The business was forced to temporarily close because there was no hot water. Hello. How are you guys doing? I stopped by this week to see if the business had corrected its violations. Can I ask you some questions? But the employees weren't talking. They went off to the back to hide. They even closed the kitchen door. Is that a no? While waiting for them to return, I noticed they hadn't posted their most recent inspection. This one was from last year. So for the record, no comment? As we were leaving, a customer asked about their inspection. After hearing what was in the report, he immediately had second thoughts. Nah. You're, you're gonna pass? No, I'll pass. Okay. <laughs> La Palapa Quetrache in the 1300 block of Kirk Place earned an 80 and a reinspection. The inspector was greeted by an employee's kids running around the restaurant. He then watched an employee use bare hands to grab lettuce. There was no hot water at the hand sink. A cook wasn't wearing a hairnet, and other workers were wearing them the wrong way. Dog food containers were being used to store human food. The inspector told them to remove the containers from the business. Legal Eats, located inside the Kadena Reeves Justice Center, earned an 86. The inspector found three live roaches on a pipe in the kitchen, and he found evidence of rodent-chewed plastic, debris, and droppings in several areas. They were told to clean it up and hire pest control services. A tube of roach poison was found on a food storage shelf right above a food prep area. There was no hot water at the hand sink in the kitchen, while another sink had no handles. A missing drip pan from the vent hood resulted in a six-inch mound of grease. A reinspection was ordered. For Behind the Kitchen Door, Tim Gerber, KSAT 12 News. All right, a restaurant inside the courthouse. Yes. Had all yes. those problems. I, let's I talk object. About <laughs> let's talk about something light right now. Here is a Sky 12 over the Tower of Life building, and the flag that's flying there is the red McCombs flag, and uh, yeah, maybe rest in peace. Yeah, and I don't know if you notice, it's got RM on there at the Tower of Life building for Red McCombs, and the, the funeral services for this business, San Antonio giant, really, will be next Monday at the Tobin Center. Yes, yeah. So Red McComb services. And I'm looking at that picture right there, 66 degrees, and we got to get ready for a cooler morning. Yeah, we do. Uh, it's uh, big changes compared to what we had the past few days. 89 yesterday, 80 today. Tomorrow, a high temperature 
of 57 degrees. So a little bit of weather whiplash here. I want you to be prepared for tomorrow. Long sleeves or a light jacket throughout the day. Saturday, a little bit of an improvement to 63. Then by Sunday, we warm into the 70s and early next week on Monday, it's back to 80 degrees. I want to talk about our average last freeze. It's actually tomorrow, February 24th. That's when we on average would see our last freeze. But they, of course, have happened well into March and even a few days into April before. And I don't see any signs of a freeze coming. However, a stronger cold front by about this time next week could dip us back into the upper 30s by, say, the following Friday morning. Just the possibility something to watch dew points right now down near 40 degrees. This is significantly lower than earlier today, and it's important because we had that fog and mugginess early this morning, but then this cold front moved through stalled to the south and east of San Antonio and behind it here. We're in that dry air, relatively speaking in terms of any mugginess. I mean, you look on the humid side of it, Victoria dew point is 72. That's the oppressive humidity. Same with Corpus Christi, but then from Victoria just to Kennedy. Kennedy's down to 47 for the dew point. Temperatures not significantly affected by this front here in town. 73 Victoria, 65 Gonzales, 73 Beeville, 69 Pleasanton, 67 in San Antonio, and some 50s in the Hill Country. But you get up into the 30s in North Texas. Lubbock right now at 34, Abilene 39, and feeling more of the painful cold in the Northern Plains. Woof. 21 below in Cut Bank, Montana, 15 below in Bismarck, North Dakota. Yeah, that's where the core of the cold air is right now. We've got this front that's going to be stalled over the next couple of days. And that's important because up above it aloft, we have this southwesterly wind coming off the Pacific. With it, some moisture as well. We'll have the classic overrunning situation coming up and rising up and over that frontal area, and that's going to give us clouds and even just a little bit of dampness. I like how our future cast paints the picture. Just clouds to start the day tomorrow by the afternoon. A few sprinkles could pop up on the radar screen, but don't expect anything more than a few hundredths of an inch. And most of it, I think, will be coming Friday night on through early on Saturday morning. Not just sprinkles, but also some nuisance drizzle as well. That's up until about the noon hour on Saturday. And we just repeat it again on Sunday. And I mean, we'll take all the moisture we can get, but this is just going to be nuisance moisture. It's not going to put a dent or even have any impact on our dry conditions, our drought, exceptional and extreme drought around most of San Antonio, Bear County, and especially just up to the north and west of town. And that's really the worst drought within all of Texas, West Texas, East Texas, not even abnormally dry. They've had some good moisture around here. We have it the worst across the state. 20% chance, and that's just for sprinkles. At any given time, a few sprinkles, but <laughs> drizzle, I had to throw that in there. Pretty much 100% chance in the mornings this upcoming weekend. Tomorrow, cloudy, 50 degrees at 8 a.m. By noon, we're up to 54, and then only 57 for the high temperature. I mean, we could make it into the low 60s south of town. Floresville, Post, 61. Poteet, Divine, possibly up to 63, but that may be a little generous. Then all of us make it into the 60s on Saturday. By Sunday, 70s, and next week, 80s. However, we are going to be watching for a cold front about this time next week, a more noticeable one. All right. Thank you, Adam. All right. So the Spurs have had some Hall of Fame players. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know that they've ever had a Hall of Fame coach who is in the hall because of his work with the Spurs. Exactly. Let me put it that way. And Pop credits the Spurs, of course, his players of course. for getting the Hall of Fame nod. But tonight, before the Spurs played the Mavericks, he was asked by a Dallas reporter about going into the Hall of Fame with Dallas great Dirk Nowitzki. And Pop's answer is priceless. Plus, in high school, Javon Tolliver is the king of rebounds out at Steel. Coming up. During layup line, I did see a couple of the Mavs players as they started to make a move toward the basket. They would look down at the floor like their feet were slipping. And so obviously it's concerning. Spurs Mavs was delayed because of condensation on the court at the American Airlines Center due to the Dallas Stars ice rink under the basketball floor on game day. 
Yeah, the wet court caused the Spurs and Mavs game to tip at 8 o'clock tonight instead of 7.30. First quarter, Spurs are on the run. Devontae Graham to Zach Collins for a layup and the Spurs lead 19-18. Then Kelvin Johnson fakes a three and feeds Charles Bassey for a slam dunk, but Dallas led 34-26 after one. Second quarter, Malachi Branham stops at the three-point line, passes to Zach, back to Branham for a free throw. J for two of his 14 first-half points. He was the only Spurs to reach double digits in the first half, and San Antonio trailed 74-63 at halftime. Third quarter, Blake Wesley throws the inbounds pass off the shoulder of Luka Doncic, and he goes baseline for a slam dunk. Very smart play from the Rook, and that's as good as it got for the Spurs. They fall 142-116, losing their 15th straight game. Branham led the Spurs with 23 points. So the Spurs will continue the rodeo road trip Saturday night at 8 at the Utah Jazz. All right, before facing the Mavs tonight, Spurs head coach Greg Popovich held his normal pregame presser, and he was asked about his Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame nomination. He's one of five coaches as seven players named as finalists from the North American and Women's Screening Committees. Pop is the winningest coach in NBA history and a five-time NBA champion. He's a finalist along with Pau Gasol, Dirk Nowitzki, Tony Parker, Dwayne Wade, and Becky Hammond. Before coaching tonight, Pop was asked about going into the hall with Dirk, and Pop kept it real like he always does. If you got to go in the Hall of Fame with Dirk, uh, you're not worthy. He's worthy. I'm not. You know, the Hall of Fame is for people like Dirk, not me. You want Bob Towers? I? Or well, your team? Uh, that's a little more accurate. I was there. I was there during all five, but I didn't win them. The entire class of 2023 will be announced in Houston on April 1st at the NCAA Men's Final Four. In boys high school basketball, the Steel Knights have one of the best rebounders in the area in small forward Javon Tolliver. The junior forward is playing in his third varsity season, and he recently broke the school record for rebounds in a single season with 331. The record was previously held by Gerald Liddell, who grabbed 294 in 2016. Javon's dad told us that the record is special to Tolliver, and he takes pride in playing his role on the team. So how does he feel about setting a school record? I'm just playing the game, doing what I got to do. I just really want to win. So if rebounding helps our team win, then that's what I'm going to do. That's pretty special. I mean, Javon, he does everything for us. He's like the, the glue to our team. You know, having him really helps us a lot. He's got another year left. You know, I know people don't want to hear that, but he's only a junior. You know, but no, great kid. He just works so hard. He's real important for our team, man. He helps us. Half our, half our shots are just for us to get it. He'll get the rebound. He'll get fouled, get his N1. Um, he's real special down there. Tolliver and the Knights will face Stony Point in round two of the Class 6A playoffs tomorrow night at 7 at Lehman High School. When the Houston Astros drafted right-handed pitcher Forrest Whitley with their first-round pick in 2016, he was expected to one day become a key piece in Houston's rotation. But nearly seven years later, the Alamo Heights ace still hasn't pitched a single inning for the big league club. There are several reasons for this delay, including injuries and Tommy John surgery two years ago. Whitley is 25 years old and still on the Astros' 40-man roster, which is a good thing. All at camp, I kind of just wanted to give myself like a clean slate. I didn't really want to come in trying to compete with any of the, the big leaguers on the roster now. Um, I just wanted to come into camp, uh, show everybody what I have right now, and see if that could put me in a spot either in the bullpen or hopefully in the rotation. Whitley enters the season as the team's number 10 ranked prospect by MLB Pipeline. And this cowboy right here had a rough ride at the rodeo after the break. Five of ten Cowboys went the distance tonight. The San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo. Ernie Corson Jr. lasted about three seconds before he reigns, bucks him off, and then Ernie takes a spin on that bull's back before he got away. I mean, that was close. Here's Trey Holston going round and round on board the bull. Lil Bill and Holston breaks off the second best ride of the night. Eight seconds and 86 points. Cue up the high score of the evening. Kai John Hamilton testing his skills on board the bull. DJ Casper and Hamilton makes it look easy and he wins tonight's round with an 86 and a half and he's still riding. Yeah, look at him go. He went more than eight seconds. Yes. And he's from? Australia. Yeah. Down under. Put a couple shrimps on the Barbie tonight. <laughs> All right, Steve. Thank you. We'll be right back after this. That's it for the night beat. Don't forget, good morning, San Antonio at 430. It's been a pleasure having you with us. Have a wonderful night and bundle up tomorrow.